Visual field testing is a common and important clinical procedure for the diagnosis and management of many neurological diseases affecting the visual system, such as glaucoma. It allows the clinician to assess the integrity of the visual pathways in a non-invasive way. Careful analysis of the visual field can help clinicians in localizing the damage within the visual pathway and determining its cause. The clinical procedure used to map out visual fields is known as perimetry. Because perimetry uses light detection task to measure the extent and sensitivity of the visual field, what we have learned so far is quite relevant. In fact, modern-day visual field testing is the culmination of years of psychophysical findings and methods related to the previous topics. Therefore, uh, we will take a look at some of the psychophysical properties behind the Humphrey Visual Field Analyzer. First, let's talk about the target size used in perimetry. As we learned previously, larger targets in general are more likely to be detected due to better spatial summation of stimulus. Target sizes of stimuli used in visual field testing follow the convention of the Goldman perimetry. The five different stimulus sizes are defined by Roman numerals I through V. Each stimulus area increases fourfold ranging from 0.25 square millimeters for a size 1 stimulus to 60, 64 square millimeters for a size 5 stimulus. For the Humphrey perimeter, a test stimulus of 4 square millimeter, which corresponds to a Goldman size 3 stimulus, is most commonly used for standard testing whereas size 5 is sometimes used for individuals with advanced field loss. Next, the luminance unit for the background and stimulus in visual field testing is called the apostille or ASB for short. This is a type of luminance measurement reflected from a surface and has been used in quantitative manual perimetry. The background luminance of the testing bowl is set at 31.5 ASB, which is bright enough to saturate rod photoreceptors. So what that means is that visual field testing is carried out in photopic range within which Faber's law holds. You will remember this from the previous light adaptation experiment. The test light intensities runs over five orders of magnitude uh, from 10,000 to 0.1 ASB, which is quite large. So according to the Weber's law, we are more sensitive to a relative change in luminance rather than absolute level of luminance. For those reasons, a logarithmic scale of luminance ratio between the reference and test stimulus is used because it is a better representation of retinal sensitivities. The unit of a logarithmic scale is the bell, B-E-L, which denotes two numbers or quantities that are proportional at a ratio of 10 to 1. In practice, more refined decibel, um, dB for short, which is 0.1 bell, is used to denote two numbers that are proportional at a ratio of 10 to 0.1 to 1. Um, so in this case, three decibel correspond approximately to a factor of 2. Unlike ASB, decibels delineate a, a, a log reduction of a maximum stimulus that can be generated by a given perimeter. So every reduction in light intensity in log order 
corresponds to 10 decibel, meaning that the perimeter can measure sensitivities over a 50 decibel range. Test locations where the patient is an, unable to see a stimulus of the highest possible light intensity that can be generated by a perimeter are assumed that the patient is totally blind at those locations, even though they may still be able to see brighter lights if available. And for those locations, a value of zero decibel is assigned. Therefore, when the range of stimuli intensities provided by a Humphrey machine is 0.1 to 10,000 ASB, then the range corresponds to 50 to 0 decibel, respectively. The higher the decibel value of threshold sensitivity for a given locus in the visual field, the dimmer in luminance, the more sensitive the visual system must be at that point for the stimulus to be detected. The threshold values reported for each location reflect the uh, extent to which light can be dimmed and still detected. For example, a value of 30 decibel indicates that the stimulus can be dimmed thousandfold to 10 ASB from the maximum luminance of 10,000 ASB, but still be detected. Therefore, effective areas of a visual field present themselves as points in the visual field printout with lower decibel values than those in the surrounding normal areas. The uh, numerical values that appear on a Humphrey visual field are not in the unit of luminance, but the values uh, represent uh, sensitivity in decibels as shown on the left panel here. The numbers on total deviation and pattern deviation maps, which are not shown here, also represent the sensitivity difference in decibel. On the right, we have a grayscale representation of the sensitivity where darker spots um, represent the locations of lower sensitivities and light, lighter spots represent the locations of higher sensitivity. So, how do we arrive at the final output like the one in the previous slide? During the visual field testing procedure, the patient fixates at the center of the display while a stimulus is presented in one of the predefined locations of her visual field. Then the patient is asked to push a button to signal when she sees the stimulus, which is basically a yes-no procedure. The stimulus is presented for 200 milliseconds to maximize temporal summation while minimizing the eye movement that may result in fixation loss. Depending upon the algorithm used, stimuli of various intensities can be presented at each of the tested locations to determine the threshold for those locations. There are a number of preset algorithms available to measure sensitivity, but in essence, the ultimate goal of all these algorithms is to measure the intensity of the dimmest stimulus that can be detected 50% of the time under a photopic condition. The full threshold strategy is using traditional one-to-one -one up down interlift staircase where in the first trial a stimulus brighter than the age corrected normative value is presented at one location. If the stimulus is seen, um, then stimuli are presented with its intensity repeatedly reduced after each trial until the stimulus is not seen. Staircases are randomly interleaved between the locations so that multiple locations in the visual field are tested at the same time instead of completing a staircase 
in one location at a time. The stimulus intensity changes in steps of four decibel until the first reversal occurs and subsequently in steps of two decibel. With the Humphrey Field Analyzer, the stimulus intensity of the last seen presentation is taken as the final threshold estimate after a second reversal at a given location occurs. Depending upon the number of test locations and the level of abnormality of the patient, the test can easily take more than 15 minutes, which can be quite time consuming and demanding for clinical purpose. For that reason, faster algorithms have been developed to cut down the testing time. So FastPack is an early example of such effort, which uses a three, three decibel step size and estimates the threshold after only one reversal, except for the four primary seed locations in which standard full threshold testing procedure is carried out. If thresholds of locations differ from expected values by four decibel or more, then thresholds of those locations are re-estimated. Even though it is considerably faster than conventional standard threshold strategy, um, studies have indicated that it underestimates mean deviation, pattern standard deviation, and corrected pattern standard deviation when compared with the standard algorithm. Finally, the Swedish Interactive Threshold Algorithm, also known as CETA, can be considered as a modified adaptive staircase where the algorithm starts its data collection by presenting an initial set of stimuli intensities based on a model probability distribution of age-matched normal sensitivity at four primary locations. Then the thresholds measured at these locations will be used as a starting intensity at neighboring locations. This is very similar to the Psi method we have seen previously, where a model probability space is assumed and the model approaches the observer's distribution on the fly by updating the posterior distribution based on the response made by the observer in each trial. With this algorithm, it is claimed that the testing time is re reduced in half compared to the full procedure without sacrificing the accuracy and precision. This algorithm has been advanced from CETA standard to CETA fast in the second generation, and now CETA faster algorithm is available in the third generation model.